What's going on, guys? Thanks for tuning in to episode two of the beginner fly tying kit by Togan's Fly Shop. And today we're going to be tying the Copper John with all the materials um, that are available from your beginner's fly tying kit. Um, so here you're looking at a different version. If you've never heard of um, the Copper John, this is John Barr's signature fly. Um, and there are a variety of ways to tie this, uh, different colors. Um, so we're gonna be just doing a different variation of it. I think at this point in our lives, almost every fly that's created is a variant of something from the past. So we're gonna be tying this one on. It's got some black tail. Um, in your kit, you should have some gold wire, uh, but I'll go through some of the materials that you're going to be pulling out of your kit shortly. Um, so for this, in your kit, what you're going to want to do is pull out your size 14 nymph competition hooks. You're also going to want to pull out your 2.8 millimeter uh, gold tungsten beads. You're going to want to pull out your red thread from the box. It's going to be a 70 denier. You're going to pull out your black goose biots that we're going to use for the tail. You're going to want to pull out your gold copper wire um, that comes in a small spindle. Um, I don't have one, so I'm just going to be using copper for this tutorial. You're going to want to pull out your um, black scud back. We're just going to need a little piece of that. Take out your flashable. We're going to need a strand of that. And you're going to pull out your prism dubbing. Again, you can use anything you want, but this kit is equipped to help you essentially tie your first copper john. So um, in this one, we're going to be using the, the brown olive. And then lastly, you want to pull out your hen feather. You're going to have a few feathers in there. Um, part of a part of a part of a saddle, um, but we're really just going to need one feather from that. So if you want, you can pre-prep your materials. Um, that, that's what I do. I just find it helps me stay organized, um, keep things in line. And, you know, you can bang off, you know, two or three um, at a time at minimum uh, until you get sort of the, the hang of things. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get my bead on my hook and the hook in the vise. And just like that, I'm gonna pop that in there. Now, because this is a tungsten bead, you don't need to add any weighted wire. Uh, I mean, you could if you want to, but um, I find these tungsten beads really work great in getting um, really deep into those water streams very quickly. So now we're gonna go ahead and just start our thread base. So I'm gonna grab my thread right behind the bead and start wrapping backwards. And then right before the bend of the hook, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build up a little, a little ball, nothing too, nothing too big. And that's it. That little ball is simply just going to help splay out my tails a little bit more. I find with the smaller nymphs, um, getting the goose biots to splay properly can be a little bit tricky. So this just helps in, in, in aid in that. And now you're gonna grab your goose biots and you're gonna pick something proportionate to the hook. Um, so you don't want anything too small. Uh, you also don't want, like this is too small. You don't want anything too large either. So do your best to pick something that looks nice um, 
and again, proportionate to the hook. You know, I can't, I can't stress that enough when it comes to flies, it's just proportion, proportion, proportions. So I found two here that I like. And now you're going to notice all feathers and a goose bite is, is a feather, um, have some form of natural curvature to them. You want them to curve outwards from the back of the hook. So I'm not going to put that natural curvature that's going this way on this side of the hook. I want to put it on the other side of the hook so that it naturally starts to go this way. You can tie these on one at a time, um, or you can do both at the same time. I'm gonna do both, and I'm simply gonna measure it. And for you know, good reference, again, it's total, total preference, but um, to get you started, you know, a good hook shank should be good, and you can always make it shorter or longer on how you please. So what I'm doing is I just, I measured it, and then I lined it up to where my thread um, where I stop my thread and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer them to my left hand and hold them in place nice and tight and then with a little pinch wrap should be able to secure them in place and now these are just a little bit too long for my liking so I'm gonna just pull them a little bit Shorten them up a bit. Make sure they are the way I want them. And then again, holding them, I'm gonna do some really firm wraps and crank down on them. And those shouldn't be going anywhere. Now I'll just secure those all the way up. And I'm going to bring my thread back a little ways. And that should do it. So those tails are locked in. Now what you're going to do is you're going to grab your wire. We're gonna tie in the abdomen now. Um, for the wire, I find with this size, you know, give yourself two sort of like, like unravels. Give yourself some material to play with. I think a lot of people, they always tend to get uh, sensitive without, you know, not wanting to waste materials. I just find that, you know, when materials are too short or too small, um, they, they're, they're harder to handle. So I'll just give myself a little bit of extra. And it's just easier to tie in that way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the tip of your, just inside the hook there. And then I'm going to secure that in. And then I'm going to work my way back towards the bead. That'll just help keep a more consistent profile on the body. And then I do like to have a little bit of a taper on my nymphs. So I'll come back with some thread wraps towards the middle of the body. And now we're ready to, to wrap our body up. So the first wrap, is always the most important. You want to make sure you get that started correctly. So I'll just make sure that it start right nice close to the tail. Make sure my next one is right up close to it touching. And then from there, just want to make sure that they're nice snug touching wraps. And if you leave a space, you can come in here with your nail move them together. And 
you'll find sort of once you do this a few dozen or a hundred times, you just kind of get the flow of it. So I'm not going to come up too close to the bead because I need to I need to tie in a, a lot more materials there, but I will come a little bit further than where I actually want to stop. And again, just to uh, really secure that that body in. So keep intention on your thread. You're you're then able to helicopter the wire out. Just take your time with doing that. That took me a while to sort of get used to. I used to just use a pair of actual wire cutters, but uh, the helicopter method works good. So now before you get carried away with thread wraps, um, if you've seen any of my other videos. I made mention it before that I'm, I'm, I'm one of those guys that wrap too many times and it adds too much bulk. So I have to consciously tell myself to slow, to stop wrapping, <laughs> to stop wrapping with my thread um, because we have so much more material to tie. Um, so what I'm going to tie in next is going to be a piece of that flashable. So from the pack, all you gotta do is just grab one single strand out of that thing. One strand. One strand is very long. You can probably make about half a dozen flies out of one strand, if not more. So I'm just gonna cut off, I don't know, a two, two and a half inch piece. And again, give yourself some room to play with because if it's too short, then you're left, you know, really trying to, you're gonna struggle sort of handling the material. And so what I've done here is I've placed the flashaboo not directly on top and in the middle, but just slightly more towards myself because as I wrap the thread, it's going to center it for me. So now with that thread torque, it's essentially centered. And now you're gonna notice I'm gonna come back a ways because I wanna have a nice healthy thorax section. And then again, slow down, because we're gonna tie in another material and you're gonna to wanna to grab your scud back and you're simply gonna to wanna to cut off about an inch, an inch and a half worth of material. Feel free to cut some more off if it's too hard to handle. And same thing, I'm not gonna place it directly on top, but more a little bit angled towards me. And then that first wrap should help bring it towards the center. And then I'm gonna secure that in. Just check where I'm at on the body. That looks decent. And that's it. Um, so now we're ready to tie in our thorax. For that, I want you to go ahead and grab your dubbing. And you can see it's not a big thorax area, nor is it a big fly. So you only start with as little as possible. And if you're in doubt, grab less than what you think is a little. Because you can always add more. So I added just a little thin noodle. I don't know if you can see that there. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and make some Make some wraps. So I just want a little bit more there.
nice big thorax. And now for our legs. For the legs, I want you to go ahead and grab a single feather from your hen saddle. Now there are a few ways you can do this. Um, I'm gonna show you what I think is the easier way, um, just from a, a, a beginner's perspective. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just, I've grabbed the tip of this and I've preened some of the feathers back. An amount that I think would look like a nice healthy set of legs. So that's essentially sort of what one side of the fly's legs are gonna look like. So I think that's okay. And what you're gonna do is by keeping them straight, you can simply grab them and it keeps the tips fairly aligned. Not perfect, but legs aren't perfect. You're gonna grab them and simply tear them off the stem trying your hardest to keep the tips aligned. You're gonna roughly measure where you want them on the fly. I don't, I don't focus too hard on it because it's, you know, sort of a large set of fibers. I can do it roughly and I'll do one or two sort of very loose wraps and that way it's just sitting on the side of the of the hook there. And now I can come in and make my adjustments by pulling the tag end. So whether I want them up higher, whether I want them to ride lower, I can do something like that. And that's kind of the end result that I'm, I'm looking to achieve. So once I have that in place, I'm gonna hold them with my thumb. And then I'm gonna just grab my thread and I'm gonna just Give it a nice little tug. One more wrap, and those are in place. Now I can come in here and tag off, uh, tie off my, uh, cut off my tag ends. And I'm simply gonna repeat that process for the other side of the fly. So by separating it the way we did, you're essentially gonna have the same amount of fibers on each side. And then simply just tear those off the stem Try my best to keep those tips aligned. Sorry, I gotta flip my uh, my vise here a little bit. So again, it's rough, just holding them in place. And I can do one, two loose wraps, and then make my adjustments. And then I'll sort of make turn my vise around, change my my angle so that I'm viewing it from different perspectives and making sure that they're sort of similar to what I tied on the first side. And once I'm happy with that, again, I'll grab them, hold them in place, grab my thread and give it a nice little, nice little pull. And I can come in here and cut off my tag ends. legs are in place. Now we're going to pull over our scud back. So just pull that over and here you can sort of preen the legs back and down again but by holding it here I'm just going to do again a loose wrap. Make sure it's nice and centered make any adjustments and then I'll crank down on it again. Okay, so back to the scud back. I'm gonna give it a little pull. By giving it a little pull and nipping it, it kind of sucks back underneath that thread a bit. Now we're gonna pull our flashaboo over. That just gives that wing case that little oomph that fish like. Then we can nip off our tag end there. And now we're ready for a few whip finishes. So you grab your whip finish tool 
and I just do a three turn whip finish because we're going to hit this up with some UV clear finish. All right, and before I typically put on UV, I'll just make sure that there's no big loose fibers of any sort, whether it's from the dubbing or from the hen, um, just to give it a nice look. So in your beginner slide tying kit, you also got a UV clear fly, uh, fly finish by Loon. I have mine already all set up and ready to go. I like to use the really, really fine tip. I tie a lot of small nymphs, so the precision um, of the fine tip adapter really, really helps, I find. So we're just going to go ahead and give this a little squeeze. This, this in itself takes practice. And once I'm happy with that, we're gonna hit that with our UV torch. You're all set. That is maybe your first copper john. And now it's go now it's time to go tie eleven more. Um, hope you give it a shot. Hope you enjoy the video and tune into the next episode, which we're gonna be covering, I believe, the jumbo john, which is basically a larger variation of this. Um, a little bit more legs and more bugginess. So another fantastic fly. So be sure to uh, subscribe and stay tuned for episode three coming uh, probably within a week or so. Thanks a lot, guys. Cheers.